Good morning. Dean Williamson, Reverend Oswig, distinguished guests, faculty, parents, family, friends, and graduating students. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 60th Tripaya Exercises of the McDonough School of Business. <clears throat> I am Patricia Grant, <clears throat> Interim Senior Associate Dean and Director of Undergraduate Programs. Today we assemble to honor our students for their academic achievements and service to the community. As we celebrate your achievements here today, it is important to recall the Jesuit principle of women and men for others, and our goal to educate the whole person. As these suggest, we at Georgetown are just as interested in helping you develop character and find your purpose in life as in guiding you intellectually and professionally. Like a lighthouse, I know you will be beacons of excellence in the world of business. We congratulate you on your achievements, and I am enormously and personally proud of each of you for what you've accomplished during your time at Georgetown. Please remain standing for the invocation to be offered by the Reverend Brian Osvig. Let us pray. Ever present creator, open us to your presence here. For the privilege of striving, for the colleagues, friends, and mentors who've journeyed with us, for the joy of this moment, we are thankful. We honor this day the gifts of our education and commitment, which gives hope and promise to this world, to ourselves, and to our families. May this moment of celebration and commendation be a commitment of our talents to the service of our world. May our work give courage to the oppressed, provide strength to those that despair, and further the cause of peace. Amen. Please be seated. We will begin our ceremony today with the presentation of awards, for stu to students for their academic excellence. Mm -hmm. Each award recognizes the extraordinary efforts of students in the major areas of business studies. These awards are given as a tribute to our students for the generous support of individuals and organizations <coughs> with close ties to Georgetown University and the McDonough School of Business. We thank all of them and acknowledge their continued support. We will begin with Professor Kirsten Anderson who will present the awards in accounting. Professor Anderson. Thank you, Dean Grant. Please hold your applause until all of the accounting recipients have been recognized. Will all the awardees please ascend the stage on my right and descend on my left? Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the accounting awards have been completed? Sydney May or Ziniak? Carl Kuo Yi? Owen James Siriani? Anne Elizabeth Feeney, Brett Armstrong Humphrey, David Kevin Bruton, Sebastian Aristotle Hart. This year, the Deloitte Award for Accounting Excellence is awarded to Sydney May Wozniak. After graduation, Sydney will work as a commercial audit associate at KPMG in McLean, Virginia. The George Houston Accounting Achievement Award, donated by the late and former professor at the McDonough School of Business, George Houston, recognizes the senior attaining the highest academic achievement in the field of accounting. This year, the award goes to two students, Carl Kuo Yi and Owen James Siriani. After graduation, Carl will work as part of the transaction advisory staff at Ernst & Young in New York City, and Owen will work as an investment banking analyst at Credit Suisse in New York City.
The Georgetown University Accounting uh, uh, sorry, the Georgetown University Accounting Society Award for Service and Excellence goes to the students who have demonstrated excellence in the leadership of and in service to undergraduate accounting students. This year's recipients are Anne Elizabeth Feeney and Brett Armstrong Humphrey. After graduation, Anne will work as a Banking and Capital Markets Assurance Associate at PwC in New York City, while Brett will work as a Financial Analyst at BDT Capital Partners in Chicago. The Hoffman Galasso Family Award is donated by alumna Melissa Hoffman Galasso and goes to the accounting graduate who has made exceptional contribution to the accounting department. This year's Hoffman Galasso Award goes to David Kenneth, Kevin Bruton. After graduation, David will work as an investment banking analyst at Goldman Sachs. For excellence in academic achievement and for a positive attitude both in the classroom and more broadly toward the field of accounting, Sebastian Aristotle Hart is recognized with the Accounting Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. After graduation, Sebastian will work as an investment management analyst at Goldman Sachs in New York City. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. It is my pleasure to welcome Professor George Comer to the podium to present the Finance Awards. Thank you, Professor Anderson. Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the finance awards have been completed? Ajesh Jain, Caitlin Leigh McCarthy, Andrea Diaz, Albert Peng Lee, Wu Jung Ko, John Charles Bannis, Catherine Corey Nawalk Wilds, Jacqueline Hodges LaPere, Justin Lee Hom. Stefan Kalpesh Shukla, Nicole Marie Calaruso. The Robert and Laura Steers Award for Excellence in Real Estate Finance is given to Ajesh Jain. After graduation, Ajesh will work as a private equity analyst at the Meridian Group. The Michael G. Pissarros Award for Excellence in Investments is given to Caitlin Leigh McCarthy. After graduation, Caitlin will work as an investment banking analyst at Goldman Sachs in New York City. Congratulations. The Center for Financial Markets and Policy Award for Achievement in Finance is presented to Andrea Diaz. After graduation, Andrea will work in investment banking at J.P. Morgan in New York City. Congratulations. Oh, 
The Center for Financial Markets and Policy Award for Achievement in International Finance is given to Albert Peng Lee. After graduation, Albert will work as a corporate finance analyst at Houlihan Loki. The Award for Achievement in Banking is presented to Wu Jung Ko. After graduation, Wu Jung will work as an investment banking analyst at JP Morgan. The Award for Achievement in Corporate Finance is presented to Charles, John Charles Bannis. After graduation, John will work in assurance at Ernst & Young in New York City. Congratulations. The Award for Achievement in Financial Services is given to Catherine Corey Nalwalk Wilds. After graduation, Catherine will work as an analyst at Goldman Sachs. The Financial Management Association Award for Service, given in recognition for service to the discipline of finance, is awarded to three deserving students. Jacqueline Hodges LaPere, Justin Lee Hom, and Stefan Kopesh Shukla. After graduation, Jacqueline will work as a strategic will work as a strategic partnership program analyst at BlackRock in New York City. Justin will work as an investment banking analyst at Wafchild in DC. And Stefan will work as an investment banking analyst at J.P. Morgan in New York City. Congratulations. The McDonough School of Business Finance Faculty Award for Academic Excellence is awarded to Nicole Marie Colarusso. After graduation, Nicole will work as a risk advisory associate at PwC. Please, congrats, please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. Lastly, I would like to recognize the members of the graduating class who have been inducted into the Financial Manage Management Association National Honor Society. The FMA National Honor Society recognizes members of the FMA who have the high academic achievement and have been active in the FMA. Their names can be found in the program. Will the following students please stand and be recognized? Catherine Helen Birding, Patrick James Brown, Elizabeth Nicole Dammeyer, Andrea Diaz, James Vincent Dillon Jr., Anthony Salim Fadil, Justin Lee Hom. David Alexander Koch, 
Jacqueline Hodges LaPere, Joseph Francis Lenart III, Aditya Rajan, James Monito Sherman, Stefan Kapel Shukla, Catherine Corey Nawalk Wilds. Please join me in congratulating the newest members of the FMA National Honor Society. Professor Michael Zinkuda will now present the International Business Awards. Thank you very much, Professor Comer. Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the International Business Awards have been completed? Nicole Marie Coloruso. Daniel Yang Kai. Colin Downey. Elizabeth Nicole Dammeyer. The Interlink Capital Strategies Corporation has donated an award for outstanding performance in the study of international business. This year's award goes to Nicole Marie Coloruso. After graduation, Nicole will work as a risk advisory associate at PwC. Congratulations. This is so good. Thank you. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. The Ilka Ronkainen Award for International Business and Marketing is given to the student with high academic achievement in both the marketing and international business fields. This year, the award goes to two students. Daniel Young Kai and Colin R. Downey. After graduation, Daniel will work as an investment banking analyst at Citi, and Colin will work as an associate at LEK Consulting. Thank you. Here you go. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. The International Business Faculty Award for Academic Excellence is awarded to the student who has achieved academic excellence in the classroom and more broadly toward the field of international business. This year's award goes to Elizabeth Nicole Damaya. After graduation, Elizabeth will work as a financial analyst at Blackstone in New York City. Congratulations. Well done. You're welcome. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding international <laughs> business. Well done. Professor Douglas McCabe will now present the Management Area Awards. Professor McCabe. Welcome. Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the Management Awards have been completed? Lena Latier Reeves Duffield, Rachel Elise Dansky, 
Colin R. Downey, Christine Louise Eaton, Elsa Yamalat Lazo Vasquez, Eric Vandewater, Nancy Claire Hewitt, and Cindy Warzeniak. The Aleutians Incorporated Award is awarded to the student who has demonstrated academic excellence in leadership and management studies. This year's award goes to Lena Latier Reeves Duffield. After graduation, Lena will work as a real estate private equity analyst at Morgan Stanley in New York City. The NFI Industries Award is given to the student who has achieved academic excellence in management studies. This year's award goes to Rachel Elise Dansky. After graduation, Rachel will move to New York City to pursue a career in advertising. The Tegna Award is given to the student who has achieved excellence in the study of negotiation, arbitration, and labor relations. This year's award is presented to Colin R. Downey. The William J. Usry Award established to honor the late former director of the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service and former U.S. Secretary of Labor is presented to a senior who has achieved excellence in the study of negotiation and mediation. This year's award goes to Christine Louise Eaton. After graduation, Christine will work as a global business services consultant at IBM. The William J. Curtin Award, established to honor the late William J. Curtin, former chairman of the Georgetown University Board of Directors, is awarded to the student who has achieved academic excellence and leadership. This year's award goes to Elsa Lazo Vasquez. After graduation, Elsa will stay in Washington, D.C. to pursue a career in marketing. The Swift Glass Company Award is presented to the student who has demonstrated academic excellence in innovation. This year's award goes to Eric Vandewater. After graduation, Eric will work for Datorant in Washington, D.C. The Kuroki Award is presented to the student who has demonstrated academic excellence in management studies. This year's award goes to Nancy Claire Hewitt. After graduation, Nancy will work as an investment banking analyst at City in Houston, Texas. The McDonough School of Business Management Faculty Award for Academic Excellence in Human Capital and Human Resource Management is presented to Cindy May Zinniak. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students.
And now the awards for excellence in marketing will be presented by Professor Charles Scuba. Thank you, Professor McCabe. Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the marketing awards have been completed? Brian Robert Pourer. Jordan Maya Johnson. Allison Patricia Hillsbury. And Justin Michael Schubler. The Johnny K. Johansson International Marketing Award, given to the student with an outstanding academic achievement in the study of international marketing, is presented to Brian Robert Porer. After graduation, Brian will work for a real estate investment firm in Boston, Massachusetts. The IMAX Marketing Research Award is given to the senior marketing major who has performed at a level of excellence in marketing research coursework. The recipient is Jordan Maya Johnson. After graduation, Jordan will join Accenture in New York City as a consulting analyst. The final marketing award, pardon me, that is not true. <laughs> we have one yet more, one more. The IMAX Marketing Scholar Award is given to the senior marketing major who has demonstrated the highest level of scholastic achievement in the study of marketing. This year's recipient is Allison Patricia Hillsbury after graduation, Allison will work as a marketing management trainee, trainee at L'Oreal USA in New York City. The final marketing award is the McDonough School of Business Marketing Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. This year's recipient is Justin Michael Schubler. After graduation, Justin will stay in Washington, D.C. to run his company, D.C. Food Porn, the media company he founded during his time at Georgetown. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. Induction into the Alpha Mu Alpha, Alpha Honor Society acknowledges outstanding achievement in marketing on a highly competitive basis. Their names can be found in the program. Will the following members of Alpha Mu Alpha, the National Honor Society in the field of marketing, please stand to be recognized? Daniela Aguirre Belmont. Priya Badiswala, Sophie Grace Brown, Rachel Elise Dansky, Bianchi, Bianca Giovanna Di Santo, Alejandra Elosua Gomez, Samuel Francis Fiorillo, Tessa Give. Allison Patricia Hillsbury, Stephanie Sujin Kim, Elsa Lasso 
Vasquez. Jake Montana Lockwood. Julia O'Connell Murphy. Daniel David O'Brien. Justin Michael Schubler. Anna Marie Cecilia White. Naz Yavuz. Please join me in congratulating the newest members of Alpha Mu Alpha. In the area of operations and information management, Professor Betsy Sigman will now recognize those students who have distinguished themselves both in academics and service. Professor Sigman. Thank you, Professor Scuba. Will the following graduates please come forward and remain on stage until the OPM Operations and Information Management Awards have been completed? Eric Patrick Irwin, Dipali Gupta, Catherine Corey Nowak Wild, The Deloitte Award for Operations and Information Management is given to the student who has shown service and high academic achievement in the area of operations and information management. This year's award goes to Eric Patrick Irwin. After graduation, Eric will work as an investment banking analyst at Credit Suisse in New York City. The Price Waterhouse Coopers Award for Service and Scholarship in Operations and Information Management is awarded to the student for his or her high level of service to the discipline of operations in combination with a high level of scholarship. This year's award goes to Dipali Gupta. After graduation, Dipali will work as a consultant at Ernst & Young. <laughs> the, the McDonough School of Business Operations and Information Management Faculty Award for Academic Excellence is presented to Catherine Corey Nowak Wild. After graduation, Catherine will work as an analyst at Goldman Sachs. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. The following students have been inducted into the Omega Rho Society, the Scholastic Honor Society for Operations Research and Management Science. Their names can be found in the program. Will the following members of the first Georgetown University class of Omega Rho please stand to be recognized? Marla Corpus Abadilla. Donald John Angelini III. Drew Gennaro De Prinzio. Daniel Atroff. Soraya Lillian Eid, Dipali Gupta, Sarah Yunjia Hong, Eric Patrick Irwin, David Alexander Kott, Kevin Ma, Michael Leonard Peskett, Juan Diego Posada, Claudia Recci, Catherine Corey Nowak Wild, William Montague York, 
Please join me in congratulating the newest members of Omega Rho. Dean Grant. This concludes the recognition of academic achievements within the school's majors. Thank you, Professor Sigmund. It's now my honor and pleasure to recognize the students who've distinguished themselves academically and have given themselves in service to others. Our first award is in honor of Reverend Joseph S. Seabees of the Society of Jesus and the founder of the undergraduate business program at Georgetown University. A Hungarian Jesuit with a Harvard doctorate in Far Eastern Studies, Father Seabees championed the founding of the business school and served as its first regent and acting director from 1964 to 1966. In 1979, the business school established the Father Joseph Seabees Award to be presented to a member of the graduating class who's made a significant overall contribution to the welfare and reputation of the school. This year, the award is presented to Andrew James Fogarty for his extraordinary dedication to improving the McDonough student community. During his time at McDonough, Andrew has led the McDonough Peer Ambassador Program, co-led the McDonough Sophomore Alternative Spring Break to Philadelphia, and led the McDonough Business Strategy Challenge Case Competition. Lastly, Andrew has served as a first-year seminar writing coach and is a member of Innovo Consulting, an undergraduate consulting club that works with nonprofits in the DC area. Upon graduation, Andrew will work as an investment banking analyst at RBC Capital Markets in New York City. Andrew, would you please come forward to accept your award? The next award is the Otmar Winkler Award, which was established in 1993 by the Winkler family through the initiative of James P. Winkler, PhD, and his wife, Mary. I would like to invite Dr. Winkler to join me in presenting the award to this year's recipients. The Otmar Winkler Award honors graduating seniors who have distinguished themselves by demonstrating a strong concern for others and the less privileged, especially in the Washington, D.C. community. This award is given in the hope that future business leaders among our graduates will be inspired to balance the demands for profitability of their enterprise with a caring attitude for all those who depend upon them. It is with great pleasure that we present the Otmar W. Winkler Award to two students. Would Christine Louise Eaton and Albert Peng Lee please join us on stage to accept your awards. As they're coming, I'll tell you that the first award recipient is Christine Louise Eaton for her commitment to serving the DC community. During her time at Georgetown, Christine spearheaded the expansion of a New York-based organization called Rescuing Leftover Cuisine to the Washington, DC area. Within one year, her organization was able to donate more than 20,000 pounds of food by facilitating the transportation of excess meals from restaurants, catering businesses, and clubs to local kitchens and missions that serve the hungry. Christine has also volunteered at Martha's Table since her first year at Georgetown. In March of 2017, she took part in a week-long immersion mission to Southeast DC in an effort to build lasting relationships with the community in which she stayed. The experience had such an impact on Christine that she will continue to live out its mission in, of relational service by moving into the Chirilagua neighborhood after graduation. For these and many other reasons, Christine is awarded the Otmar Winkler Award for 2017. The second award recipient is Albert Peng Lee. Albert is a member of Hoya Taxa, an organization dedicated to serving the DC community through financial literacy education. Through Hoya Taxa, Albert provided financial advising to low-income families in the Washington, D.C. area and assisted them in filing their income tax returns. 
Albert has served at all levels from volunteer to shift lead to board member since his first year at Georgetown. Over four tax seasons, Albert has volunteered more than 150 hours at tax sites and filed more than 100 tax returns while meeting one-on-one -on -one with low-income low income DC residents. Albert has also, is also the president of Innovo Consulting, again, a student-led organization that provides pro bono consulting services to nonprofits and social entrepreneurs. Albert believes that this model of community service, experiential learning, and professional development is deeply enriching and meaningful. For these and many reasons, Albert is awarding, awarded the Otmar Winkler Award for 2017. Let me say a few words. Please. You heard all the merits of the two recipients. This award was established 24 years ago at the behest of my son, Jim, and his wife, Mary, and all the, the, the my own family set up this award. It's different. You may not have noticed the difference. It's not for academic excellence. That's taken for granted. They're all very bright kids. <laughs> what they stand out in is, besides the demanding curriculum of studies, they found the time to care for less privileged people in the Washington area, spent time with the poor and uh, uh, people with less uh, fortune in their lives. Both are excellent examples for all the other recipients that the bottom line has to be taken care of, but it's not the only thing that you will have to watch in life. So. Congratulations to Christine and her parents to have brought up a person like this. And congratulations to uh, Albert and his parents for having a son who takes care of others in addition to taking care of all his other obligations. So, Applause to them. Congratulations. The last award is the Undergraduate Dean's Award, given to recognize a graduating senior of the McDonough School of Business who has made the most significant overall contribution in the area of social enterprise or social entrepreneurship, either in the local or global community. This year's recipient of the Undergraduate Dean's Award is Febin James Bellamy. Febin, will you please approach the stage? While he comes, Some, since coming to Georgetown University, Febin founded the group Unsung Heroes, a nonprofit organization that promotes awareness and appreciation for the employees of college campuses who often work behind the scenes to ensure that the university is running smoothly and efficiently. Febin and his group work to not only recognize the unsung heroes on campus by telling their stories, but also help raise money for these heroes to recognize their own dreams. Febin's organization is now spreading to college campuses across the country, including Notre Dame and UNC Chapel Hill, and has been featured on news outlets from NBC News to the BBC and Huffington Post. Febin will continue to run this social impact organization after graduation. It is for these efforts and many others that he's awarded the 2017 Undergraduate Dean's Award.
We will now recognize those students who have been honored by induction into national academic honor societies. Seven members of the class of 2017 have been inducted into Alpha Sigma Nu, the Jesuit Honor Society for loyalty, scholarship, and service. Their names are listed in the program. Will the following students please stand and be recognized? John Charles Bannis, Nicole Marie Calaruso, Andrea Diaz, Caitlin Lee McCarthy, John Edward Sanford, Owen James Siriani, Sydney May Warziniak. Thank you, congratulations. 40 students from the class of 2017 have been inducted into Beta Gamma Sigma, the International Business Honor Society. Their names are listed in the program and can be recognized by the blue and gray cords, green cords they wear. Will these students please rise together and be recognized? Two students from the class of 2017 have been inducted into Pi Delta Phi, the National French Honor Society, recognizing those students who have achieved outstanding scholarship in the French language and in Francophone literature. Their names can be found in the program. Will the following students please rise and be recognized? Elizabeth Savory Scattergood, Tatiana Harmila Shashu. One student from the class of 2017 has been inducted into Sigma Delta Pi, the National Collegiate Hispanic Honor Society, recognizing those students who've achieved academic recognition in the study of Spanish language and literature. Will Anthony Fadil please rise and be recognized? One student from the class of 2017 has been inducted into Theta Alpha Kappa, the Religious Studies and Theology Honor Society, recognizing the academic achievements of religion and theology students. Will Christina Lynn Graziano please rise and be recognized? The following students will be receiving their diplomas with highest honors, summa cum laude. This honor is for those students who have achieved a grade point average of 3.9 or above. Please come forward as I call your names and receive a certificate to acknowledge this outstanding achievement. Please remain on stage until all names have been called. John Charles Bannis, Nicole Marie Calaruso, Elizabeth Nicole Demeyer, Ajesh Jane, Caitlin Lee McCarthy, Owen James Siriani, Sarah Elizabeth White, Kathleen Corey Nawak Wiles. Congratulations.
those students graduating with a grade point average between 3.727 and 3.899 will be receiving their diplomas with the honor of magna cum laude. Their names can be found in your program. Will those students please stand as a group to be recognized now? Those students graduating with a grade point average between 3.638 and 3.726 will be receiving their diplomas with the honor of cum laude. Their names can be found in your program. Will those students please stand together now and be recognized? Dean Williamson, will you please join me in recognizing the valedictorians for the class of 2017? Catherine C. Wiles and Nicole M. Colarusso, please come forward. Each year, the McDonough School of Business presents the valedictorian award to a graduating senior in recognition of outstanding achievement in the field of business graduating with the highest grade point average in the class. This year, for the first time, we have a tie for this top honor. <laughs> Each with a GPA of 3.991, you can do the math on that, the valedictorians of the class of 2017 are Catherine C. Wiles and Nicole M. Colarusso. See, we haven't had practice with this. This is new, <laughs> brand new. <laughs> and now each student will have an opportunity to say a few words on behalf of the class of 2017. First, after the picture, will be Catherine C. Wilds. Good morning, Dean Williamson, Dean Grant, distinguished faculty, my fellow graduates, family, and friends. I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to you today and to reflect on our last four years together at Georgetown. I want to say a huge congratulations to my friend and fellow valedictorian, Nicole Calarusso. As the first co-valedictorians of the business school, Nicole and I have decided to work together to do something a little different today. We'd like to share with you what we consider to be a kind of Ignatian examine on the last four years. The examine, as many of you know, is a Jesuit technique for prayer and reflection. It begins with a review of the events of the day and encourages us to seek insights that we may use to inform our actions tomorrow. In keeping with this tradition, I will share a bit about my own Georgetown experience with a focus on the past, while Nicole continues by looking toward our future. When we first arrived at Georgetown during new student orientation, we were all given a new label as Hoyas and as members of the McDonough School of Business. For some of us, Georgetown immediately felt like home. For others, and I know for me, it took some time to own that label and to really feel like a Hoya at heart. I expect many of us originally chose Georgetown for similar reasons. Its ranking in Bloomberg Business Week's top, as Bloomberg Business Week's top school for undergraduate finance, its location in Washington, D.C., and its student-run organizations that contribute in immeasurable ways to campus life and the surrounding community. Despite these reasons, or perhaps in part because of them, I spent most of my first year at Georgetown comparing myself to my peers and to what I thought a student at Bloomberg's top business school ought to look like. I felt, as I now realize many of us have, that I was surrounded by people who were more passionate, more intelligent, and more involved than I was. In short, I didn't yet feel like a Hoya, but I also couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. It wasn't until sophomore year, somewhere between deciding to minor in philosophy, performing on this stage in front of 400 people for Rangila, and finding some of my best, best friends, that I really fell in love with Georgetown. I began to see myself as part of this incredible community of students and faculty who challenge and inspire one another every day. And I chose Georgetown for a second time, 
not because of its ranking in a magazine or its location on the Potomac, but because of the people here. As Hoyas, we've broadened each other's horizons, challenged one another to go after our goals, and learned valuable lessons that we'll take with us long after we graduate. I'd like to share a few of those lessons with you now. First, one of the most important things I think Georgetown teaches, and that I'm still learning, is the importance of focusing on the future what ifs, rather than the if onlys. Looking back on the last four years, it's easy to think of all the things we could have done differently. I sometimes think, if only I'd gotten involved in that club freshman year, if only I'd gone to more basketball games, more speaker events, or more Sunday masses. If only I'd spent time getting to know more of my professors. These thoughts have a place in our reflection, and I admit they're hard to avoid. In some ways, they allow us to take stock of past failures and missed opportunities, but they also sometimes lead us to overlook future possibilities. I'm thankful to the students at Georgetown who have asked what if. What if I started my own business to share my love of food with the world? What if I created a summit to bridge the gap between female leaders and the women who admire them? What if I founded an organization to recognize unsung heroes on campus? These questions have become realities thanks to the hard work and persistence of many of you sitting here today. So thank you for inspiring me to make my own long list of what ifs and to embrace potential failure in the pursuit of greater possibilities. Another important lesson I think we learned at Georgetown is that it's okay to say no to some things if it means saying yes to the ones that really matter. It always feels like we could be doing more, waking up earlier, taking that extra internship or that role in a club we've joined. But sometimes doing less allows us to make a much bigger difference and become more deeply involved in an old passion or a new interest. I think most of us would agree that by the start of senior year, the 10 or 15 organizations that we'd signed up for at the first student activities fair had been refined to one or two primary activities that we really cared about. Well, I'm convinced that some Georgetown, Georgetown students really do do it all. I now realize that we don't have to. Making a real difference only requires that we invest our time and energy into something. It's not the number of things we do that matters, but the, rather the quality of our involvements and the relationships we form along the way. A third and final lesson I believe we can take away from our time at Georgetown is to use our similarities as a platform for exploring our differences. One of the things I love most about Georgetown is that it's a place that encourages shared experiences and makes it easy to find common ground with almost anyone. And yet at the same time, it's a place that celebrates difference and debate. We've hosted speakers on this campus who support opposing political platforms, we participated in cross-cultural events and interfaith discussions led by religious leaders from vast, vastly different faiths, and we've immersed ourselves in experiences abroad from Argentina to Barcelona to Shanghai. These experiences have helped me learn that differences, when viewed first from a shared understanding and friendship, become the basis for deep intellectual conversations. They challenge, motivate, and inspire us, rather than separating or intimidating us. So although all of us come from different backgrounds and can each call to mind a unique set of experiences when we hear the words Hoya Saxa, we are all part of the same Georgetown community, a community of people who have shared and shaped the last four years of our lives. And that doesn't end after we leave the hilltop. I know that we will carry the lessons we've learned here with us no matter where we go or what we do. And when we return to Georgetown in five, 10, and 20 years down the road, it's the relationships and memories we formed here that will always make Georgetown feel like home. We've all walked past Healy Hall and listened to the bells ringing as we made our way to class. We've spent late nights in tombs and early mornings at Bagels with the Deans. And tonight, we'll spend senior ball together and watch the sunrise over the Washington Monument. Though we've each become Hoyas in our own way and on our own time, this campus and these people will connect us for the rest of our lives. So on behalf of all of us, I'd like to say a final thank you to the faculty, administrators, and staff who've made these last four years possible. We would not be here today celebrating our shared accomplishments without your continued support and guidance. And to all of the parents and families in the room, thank you for the sacrifices you've made, both financial and personal. I hope we can continue to make you proud. And finally, to all of the graduating seniors in the room, thank you so much for supporting me and each other over the last four years. I can't wait to see what we accomplish and where our paths lead after the hilltop. I am proud to call myself a Hoya and a member of McDonough's 2017 graduating class. Thank you. Next, Nicole M. Calaruso will say a few words on behalf of the class of 2017. Nicole, please come forward. Good morning, Dean Williamson, Dean Grant, 
distinguished faculty, my fellow graduates, and our family and friends. I'm incredibly honored to have the chance to speak with you all today. To Kate Wilds, my fellow valedictorian, I want to congratulate you, and thank you for your incredibly thoughtful address. I feel privileged to share the stage with you and to be your friend. To everyone else, I want to apologize. Instead of one speech this year, you have to sit through two. <laughs> Tomorrow formally ends our time as Georgetown undergraduates. It's one of those rare moments in life when we're not exactly 100% sure what will happen next. Part of me looks at this culmination of everything we've worked for with anticipation. Change can be exciting after all. However, part of me can't help but recall the countless conversations I've recently had with other seniors at Georgetown, suddenly forced to confront the idea of a life after college and this real world we're about to enter. I often think about how the fact that this real world is unknown is actually somewhat terrifying. Kate spoke to some of the experiences that we've had here as students. I'd like to continue our examine by spending the next few minutes talking about the future, this elusive, vague thing that can be both amazing and frightening at the same time. I can't pretend to speak for everyone. Georgetown is composed of an incredibly diverse, talented student body with different views and experiences. However, what I will try to do is share three ways that I believe Georgetown has enabled us to face and embrace the future going forward. In this way, we, as soon-to-be McDonough graduates, are much more prepared for the real world than we probably even realize. And so, point one, which is that the first way that Georgetown has readied us is by teaching us how to ask important questions. I like to think that there are two types of important questions we can ask, big questions and courageous questions. The big questions are hard. They focus on life developments, decisions, identities. Some examples are, what type of life do I want? Or what will happen to my relationships after graduation? The other types of questions, courageous questions, are dangerous. They often involve moral dilemmas, and the people who ask them put themselves at risk. Examples include, when should I say no to a boss? Or, is this situation right? I constantly find myself asking random questions every day. However, what I realize is that for most of my life, I've pretty much always asked the safe questions, the questions with definite, simple answers. I haven't really had to ask the important ones, and to be honest, I haven't really wanted to. Their answers were messy and uncertain and unclear. However, as we leave Georgetown, I believe that we've been forced to ask the big questions and that we're equipped to ask the courageous ones. Through conversations with friends, discussions with career counselors, and on and off campus activities, we've been taught to analyze what we want in life. We were challenged in our classes and by our Jesuit values to think deeper and to consider the ethical dimensions of situations. And this changes how we see and navigate the world. Instead of avoiding the future and being preoccupied with fear of the unknown, we can embrace the idea that we don't know. Because by asking questions, we are, indi we are indicating that we want to know. There are still questions I haven't asked myself yet, questions that are daunting because their answers may be difficult or uncertain, but I hope going forward, thanks to my years on the hilltop, it'll be easier to ask them. Now, a second way that Georgetown has repaired us is by enabling us to see the importance of finding joy in the mundane. 99% of life is mundane. Every day isn't filled with weddings, birthdays, or graduations, and every day isn't filled with us arriving at our goals. I, like most, tend to view the mundane as a chore and something that's standing between me and where I want to be. But going forward, I'm going to try to find beauty in the mundane and to never skip enjoying the process in pursuit of the goal. Though I've definitely been bogged down in the mundane day-to-day -day of Georgetown, I've also been able to find enjoyment in places I never thought I would. Whether it was my roommate and me turning laundry night into a fun event or a group project meeting with students I didn't know becoming entertaining evenings with newfound friends. I have realized that each task is as tedious or as joyful as we make it. My hope for all of us here today is that as we go into the future, we relish the process as much as we relish the reward. Finally, I want to build off what Kate said in emphasizing the role of relationships. Yesterday, when I went to put on my convocation robe, I found a letter my mom had written on August 25th, 2013, after arriving home from dropping me off at Georgetown for the first time. She had pinned it inside, knowing that I would find it this weekend, four years later. As I read the letter, one sentence in particular jumped out at me. She said, As you put on your robe again, I pray that your college years have been happy ones, and that you have learned much, laughed a lot, and made friends who will be part of your life forever. The connections we've made here won't expire when we walk across the stage tomorrow, and we'll draw on them for years to come, even as other parts of our lives change in unexpected ways. 
I want to take a moment to thank all those people whose relationships have defined our years here and who will continue to help and strengthen us for years to come. So here's to the deans, the professors, the chaplains, to the parents, the family members, and friends that have made Georgetown what it is, and to the seniors in the room who continue to do amazing things for each other and the world every day. We often like to think of the future as something that starts when we graduate. It's something we're about to do. However, in reality, we've been building our future since the moment we stepped onto campus. During our time here, we've learned so much and have grown so much, and we're leaving with skills and knowledge and friendships that we'll draw on for the rest of our lives. The next steps may be uncertain, but I know that by asking important questions, finding value in the mundane, and falling back on relationships, we'll be able to face and, more importantly, thrive in the years to come. Thank you, and Hoya Saxa. Thank you again, Catherine and Nicole. I'd like to congratulate all of you on your accomplishments during your time at Georgetown and wish you the best as you embark on your careers. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Deputy Dean of the McDonough School of Business, Dr. Luke Watu. Dr. Watu will, will present the awards to the faculty members who have distinguished themselves during the 2016-2017 academic year in the areas of research, teaching, and service. Dean Watu. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Grant. The Faculty Research Award is presented annually to a McDonald's School of Business faculty member who, through their research efforts, has distinguished not only their career, but also their school and university by producing research that is at the cutting edge of their particular business discipline and which has found publication outlets in the most prestigious of venues. This year's award goes to Simon Blanchard, Twenty-two years ago, the Executive Council approved an annual faculty award to honor the teaching excellence of a business school faculty member. The first recipient of the award was Professor Joseph F. Lemoyne, who retired after 30 years of distinguished service. The award has been endowed by a group of Joe's former students as the Joseph F. Lemoyne Award for Undergraduate and Graduate Teaching Excellence. This year, the award is presented to Lee F. Pinkovitz of the Finance Area. <laughs> Distinction in teaching and research is complemented by distinguished service. This year, the Faculty Award for Extraordinary Service goes to Professor Evelyn Jane Williams. The Peter W. Gonzalez Jr. Award for Excellence in Adjunct Faculty Teaching is presented to Alison Adrian. It is now my pleasure to present on behalf of the MSB Academic Council the 2017 Academic Council Professor of the Year Student Choice Award. As the name implies, this award is given to the professor selected by the McDonald's School of Business Class of 2017. This year's awardee is Professor Patricia Fairfield from the accounting area. Unfortunately, <laughs> Professor Fairfield is traveling and could not attend today's ceremony. Dean Grant, please accept the trophy on Professor Fairfield's behalf. <laughs> now it is my great honor to introduce the interim dean, Professor of Finance and Bolton Sullivan Thomas Dean, Chair in International Business, Dr. Rohan Williamson.
Uh, Luke, thank you very much. Um, now, I realize I'm the last thing standing between you and 90 humid degrees, so I'll, uh, I'll be brief. <laughs> I would like to offer a heartfelt thank you to the parents and extended families of our graduates. Your support for their accomplishments and aspirations has been a powerful driver in their success. You may not know this, but I am also a Georgetown parent. Both of my sons are Hoyas. So from, a personal, from my personal experience, I also know that you've entrusted us to shape the future of your most precious loved ones. Thank you. To our graduates, you made it. <laughs> I've enjoyed being on this journey together with you for three years as your professor and the last one as your dean. I appreciate all that you've done to leave your stamp on the McDonough School of Business. You all came to Georgetown from di for different reasons. Some of you wanted to take advantage of learning in Washington, D.C. Others saw opportunity in exploring the world, whether it was our academic reputation, access to earn in internships, or because your parents thought it was a good idea. You all, jo uh, all, George all joined our Georgetown community together four years ago. Regardless of your reasons, we had a vision for you. We wanted you here so we can transform and inspire you. So much has transpired over your four years together. You've completed a rigorous business, business curriculum with foundations in principal leadership, service, and a global mindset at one of the world's oldest and most prestigious universities. Many of you traveled the world together, gaining new perspectives and insights across many dimensions. You have bonded with one another, forming friendships that will last a lifetime. You have discovered strength within you that you didn't realize you had. You have seen the world change in profound ways, but you know that you are well prepared for the challenges and opportunities that they will present. So regardless of why you chose to enroll at Georgetown, I hope you are leaving with more than you ever thought that you would. I have one wish for you, that when you walk across graduation stage tomorrow, you feel both transform transformed and inspired transformed to find within yourselves what has always been there, the ability to make a positive impact on the world, and inspired to go forth with a newfound confidence to make it happen. You're a class that represents 344 Hoyas, 344 change makers, and most importantly, 344 women and men's for others. I wish you the best in all that you do and remind you that you'll always be at home here on the Hilltop. I look forward to continuing the celebration with you and congratulations, Class of 2017. Thank you, Dean Williamson, for your remarks. I'd like to congratulate all of you on your success. This concludes the 2017 Trapaya Ceremony of the McDonough School of Business. All are invited to join the faculty and administrators for a reception under the tent on the Dahlgren Quad directly behind this building. Please remain in place until all those on the stage and all the graduates have recessed. Now, please stand for the benediction to be offered by the Reverend Bryant Osvig and remain standing as the faculty and students recess. Let us pray. May you be blessed. May there always be work for your hands to do. May your pockets always hold a coin or two. May the sun always shine on your window. May a rainbow always follow the rain. May the hand of a friend always be near you. May you never ignore the needs of the neighbor next to you. May you always dream of a gentler world. And may you have the audacity to strive to make that dream come true. And may the blessing of the impulse of all creation rest upon your hearts with a hope, with a courage, and with all the love that will see you very well into the future. Amen.